a tropical storm, Ian, but mm -hmm. Hurricane Ian did quite a bit of damage. We're seeing some remarkable footage, really. Yeah, horrible Scary. scenes, yeah. actually, down yeah. there. Southwest sections of Florida going into the Orlando area now and towards Daytona Beach as well. Mm -hmm. We don't want to see any of that rain. Mm -hmm. We've had enough of it, and I think we're going to be able to hold off the precipitation. Yesterday, we had almost a third of an inch of rain, and that put us at a surplus now for the month at almost an inch. We have 4.03 inches of rain. We're just about done with adding into the rain gauge for this month, and we're pretty close to normal now for the year. Here's what has you sneezing. Let me tell you, the ragweed is going down. It is the top allergen. It's at moderate levels. However, it's, um, it's bordering at low. And with the cooler air that's coming in, we'll probably stop showing this graphic in a couple of days as the allergy season will be behind us. What's coming this way is the remnants of the hurricane. Tropical storm Ian, now 65 mile per hour winds near the Space Coast, Cape Canaveral, Cocoa Beach, and it's going to move near Daytona and then out to sea. 65, 65, then back up to 70 mile per hour winds. That's all tropical storm, but awfully close to hurricane strength. That's Friday afternoon making landfall down here near Hilton Head Island in South Carolina as a strong tropical storm and then going up into North Carolina mountains near Charlotte over the weekend. I think towards late Saturday, some of our southern viewers could see a couple of spotty light showers or sprinkles. In Syracuse, Onondaga County completely dry. Just we are going to turn a little bit more overcast over the weekend. Once that moves along, boy, we've got a huge dry stretch. This is really what we need. High pressures build again, our next weather maker. Still that chilly flow producing a lot of lake effect clouds right now. We'll gradually eat away at those. There are some spots of drizzle and mist as well, especially south southwest of the city of Syracuse. That'll go away. So at 10 a.m., we're mostly cloudy, partly sunny in some spots. Eventually, though, turning mostly sunny by the end of the day. Temperatures struggle to rise. A wind of 5 to 10 miles per hour during the afternoon, maybe a gust of 15 miles per hour will make it feel chilly for today. More like late October than late September. We're clear as a bell this evening. Temperatures drop like a rock once the sun goes down. And I don't think these numbers are cold enough. 38, my forecast in Syracuse, could be close to freezing in Cortland. Could be in the 20s up in the Adirondacks. So frost in outlying areas, maybe not for the city of Syracuse, maybe not for the Lake Ontario shoreline. These clouds coming in a little sooner than I'm thinking. So likely still sunny First thing tomorrow, we turn partly sunny, though, with a canopy of high clouds from the leftovers for me and coming this way. Tomorrow into the lower 60s, probably mid 60s on Saturday, a pleasant day Saturday. Partly sunny to start. It does turn overcast at times, and I think late in the afternoon into the evening, southern viewers may see a couple of sprinkles. This is very aggressive. Other computer models keeping it further to the south. So stay tuned on that. It's not going to be much if we get much early showers today, giving way to late day sun. Tonight, 38, and then 63 tomorrow, warming a little bit Saturday, mostly just an increase in cloud cover, turning mostly cloudy to overcast. Mostly cloudy Sunday. There's a dry cold front coming on through that drops our temperature slightly towards Sunday night and Monday, but it brings back in drier air so that by next Wednesday, we're nearing 70 degrees. Some great autumn weather. Super Dirt Week is back celebrating 50